Hello again and welcome. I received a few comments about the last video I made on the BM786. A couple of people have commented how the bar graph wasn't working. Somebody posted how the meter was reading a little low. A couple other people were commenting how it was only displaying two places beyond the decimal point. Those are all valid points. That's definitely what was happening. But there's a reason for all three of those. And if you watch very closely, what had happened is in the previous test I had set the meter to VFD mode. Let me just go ahead and turn off our generator. And what ends up happening is once that VFD mode's enabled, you can see the bar graph right now. Hopefully it shows up on the screen. There you go. So when I enable VFD mode, you can see it turns off the bar graph. It's not a bug in the meter, that's just the way it works. And it's documented in the manual. The other thing you'll notice is as soon as I enable that VFD mode, it only displays two places beyond the decimal point. Again, that's not a bug with the meter. There's nothing that needs to be fixed. That's just the way the meter works. And again, it's called out in the manual. So the third comment about the meter reading a little low, of course, that's what the VFD mode does. It's a filter. I think the break point's set up at about 200 hertz. Of course, a lot of those waveforms that we were injecting into the meters those have very high harmonic content. So what ends up happening is if you looked at the waveforms that were somewhat clean, this meter was reading the same as the other meters we were using. But if it had a lot of distortion, this meter would read a little low. That's what it's supposed to do is filter that out. The meter was just doing what I had programmed it to. Not a bug in the meter. It's just the way it works. So sorry for that confusion. So what we're going to do is we're going to repeat that test. I have three meters now that are attached in parallel. Again, these are connected up to our amplifier. I'm going to change things up a little bit differently than what I ran last time. So I'm going to run the same two voltage levels that I ran previously, but I'm also going to increase the voltage. So there'll be a third level where I take the voltage up beyond 350 volts. I'm also going to add a few waveforms to the mix. So I'll still run the same waveforms that we ran last time, but there'll be some additional ones included in this library. I'm not going to be using the oscilloscope this time. Again, this is going to be a longer test. I really don't see a point in it. But when I edit the video, I'll take the LabVIEW application and I'll overlay it in this area here. So you'll be able to see what the waveforms look like that we're injecting into the meters. When I go to edit the video this time, I won't compress it as much as I did the last time. Hopefully that helps you kind of follow the meters and see how well they track. So there was another comment on YouTube about the Bryman BM869S or basically all Bryman meters not being able to read resistance when they're next to an AC line, I guess. You know, I'm not saying that there are not ways to make these meters screw up and that goes for any meter. You may remember some time ago I had taken a Goss and Metrowatt and a few other meters and I put them on a table inside of a chamber and I think we swept those at 10 volts per meter and you could see the Gaussian or whatnot fluctuate. You know, those all had basically a terminator on the front end of the meter. I can guarantee you if I had, you know, long probes hanging out loose on the table and we set up the meter to, I don't know, read voltage or something, of course it's going to fluctuate. If we were trying to read resistance and we had all those long wires out there, yeah, pretty much every meter is going to have a problem with that. So, is there something unique going on at Bryman? I don't know. Could be. I have never had a problem where any meter could not read resistance, you know, just sitting around the lab here. So what I've done, I'm taking the cable that is attached to our meters here, and I've wrapped that around this last Bryman. And I don't have a 560K ohm resistor. I've got this one here. This is a 1.9 mega ohm should be a little worse actually I would imagine so what I'll do is I'll just leave this thing running on the left if it has a problem we should be able to pick that up fairly easy let me adjust the meters a little bit try to get them all in here as close as we can and I think we are ready to go so let me go ahead and we'll turn on the generator
and I still leave the VFD mode on. <laughs>
Alright, so we're at the end of that test. What I have here is some very long leads. And these are probably about four feet long or more. You can see we currently still have this last waveform being applied. Actually, before we do this, let's try taking our cable. I'm going to do a few more turns around our meter. And you can see, even with three turns around it, it's not having a problem. So I'm going to disconnect our resistor and attach our leads here. It's just a disaster waiting to happen here. <laughs> All right, so now we have these huge antennas. Of course, I'm sure if we can take this now and twist this around all this wiring even just having the cables this long I wonder if we can screw it up again we'll just attach a resistor right to the end maybe ah, you can see it's picking up some noise right there I'm not too surprised what I'm going to do is we'll take the wires and let me just start bundling these together Hold this as tight as I can up against the inlet cables. There you go. See how it's bouncing around now? It's definitely having an effect on it. But, you know, really, who's going to try to make a measurement like that? <laughs> I doubt many people would. Anyway, uh, so you can see, you know, unless you have some very long cables, I don't know. I, again, I've never had a problem with it. But uh, it doesn't mean that you couldn't have. Certainly every meter is going to be sensitive to something. So, you know, did that person actually have a problem? Could be. I don't know. I've asked them to show me what their test setup was. Without that, it's kind of a crapshoot to try to replicate it. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully this was helpful for those of you who had written in. If you have other questions, feel free to ask. Again, this isn't a big deal for me to set up a test like this. You know, and if it helps you out... I don't mind running it, but I'm really not interested in, you know, testing resistors out here. Again, I get a lot of comments like that. There was one person that had written into the EV blog once that claimed they had bought like five of these pocket meters from Bryman, and they all failed the same way, you know. <laughs> so I had uh, bought one of those meters. I threw it outside in the winter for basically the entire winter. Uh, so <laughs> I'm not opposed to running tests like that, but... You know, that person never responded again. Who knows what they were doing wrong. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if this person who's having the trouble with the resistors, if they'll write in and maybe give us some more details as far as what they were doing. You know, then maybe we can look at it. But, yeah, I'm not interested in trying to look at problems that people, you know, come up with. To me, if I run into a problem under my normal use, you know, that I would post about. But, but I'm not going to go after these fringe cases. So, anyway... Till the next video, later.